two of the video about the Hertzsprung Russell diagram explained using code. If you did not watch part one so that you don't know what's going on with these chunks of code and what they mean, go watch that first. So I haven't run this block yet, so I'm gonna hit play. And uh, there's my scatter plot. I am using NumPy, by the way, to take the logarithm of all of the temperatures, but not the absolute magnitudes. And that's because the luminosity varies as t to the fourth power, and absolute magnitude is already a, a, a sort of logarithmic uh, data point anyway. So I took the log of the temperature, but not the absolute magnitude because temperature is uh, varying as t to the fourth power and the absolute magnitude technically is also logarithmic but uh, it's built in so hipparchus didn't realize that when he came up with that scale and that's kind of how uh, things go you'll also notice that i took the log on the uh, on line seven of my starting x value and my ending X value. And I told you before when discussing the Hertzsprung Russell diagram that the hot uh, values go on the left and the cool values go on the right. The blue, oh, be a fine gorilla karate me, the blue is on the left, the red is on the right. Hotter on the left, cooler on the right. So I told you in the last video that that's something that Matplotlib can do easily. You put the bigger number first instead of the bigger number last, and the xlim command will automatically flip the axis for you. So that's what I'm doing there. And that's something similar with line eight with my y limits. Remember, this is absolute magnitude, and the magnitude, besides being a logarithmic scale, it also is sort of flipped because Hipparchos made vega zero. And I guess technically he made Vega 1, but as we have continued to use the Hipparchos scale for magnitude, the negative numbers mean brighter and the positive numbers mean dimmer. So we needed it to be backwards. So the smaller number is first, meaning closer to the origin. And the, uh, well, the more positive number, excuse me, is the first one, which is the one closest to the origin. And the more negative number is last. So normally Y grows up the X axis, uh, sorry, up the Y axis. But here we've got that sort of flipped around. So we're actually having to flip both axes. So I'm telling you right now that this thing is called a Hertzsprung Russell Hertzsprung I can write Russell and I think it's two L's uh, diagram I got a lot of spelling issues going on here Hertzsprung Russell diagram so the the deal with Hertzsprung Russell diagram that you always need to remember is Besides having that sort of old definition of magnitude, and besides having the weird flipped axes, besides those two th those two things, this is actually based on the anti jump cannon Harvard scale, the OBFI gorilla karate me, and. The point that Hertzsprung and Russell were getting at with this is that if you plot on the y-axis the absolute magnitude or the luminosity, which varies as sigma t to the fourth, if you do that, and also on the x-axis, you plot a blue wavelength, so longer wavelength to the right and shorter wavelength to the left, so blue to the left and red to the right, if you do that, by having the shorter wavelength there, with means, which means bluer, that's hotter on this side. If you have the longer wavelength over here, which means redder, that's cooler on that side. So uh, notice, here I'll hit play. There's the title of my diagram, Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And I already had absolute magnitude along the x y-axis, and I already had log of t, so log of Kelvin, on the x-axis. So I did that. And notice the the groupings that come out of this diagram. It's not the the stars as they would be on the sky as a scatter plot. Instead, it's magnitude versus temperature. And you would also get the same sort of pattern if you plotted luminosity on the y-axis, increasing luminosity going up, just like magnitude 
uh, is brighter as you go up, luminosity would be too, you'll see very similar patterns. And scientists since the early part of the 20th century, as astronomy was first learning how to do this sort of work, this kind of plot is a way to group together stars so that patterns emerge. And that's very, very common for scientific plotting and graphing to try and find patterns or try and find relationships. So this is similar to other kinds of data visualization techniques in that we are trying to figure out what in the heck is going on. So this is Hertzsprung-Russell diagram done using real data that's uh, provided at the top of this notebook. And we already plotted the right ascension and declination so so we could see what they look like on the sky. But here my scatter plot is the logarithm of the temperature, which is what all that line of data is, np.log10, log base 10, using a, a library called NumPy of all the temperatures. And then the y-axis is data.absmag. So this is another way to get things out of the uh, data cube. Instead of putting data open bracket and the name like we did up here, data open bracket and the name, you can also put data dot. So that's a second way to get to individual columns. And by the way, when we did up here, one of the benefit of benefits of doing data.head is you now see the names of all the columns. So if you wanted to process all of the distances or all of the, say, constellations, you could say data dot and then whatever name is right there, or you could do it like we did in the scatter plot for the, the images of the stars on the sky and say data square bracket and then in single quotes the name. They both work, and I'm not sure which way you want to do it, but they both actually function just fine. Now, number four says, what patterns do you see in the plot? And I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to zoom in here to tell me whether or not you see patterns. I definitely made a video where I told you what this thing is called. I definitely made a video or in the previous video, I explained what this section is called. I also told you what this is called. And um, as, a, as an aside, besides having a link up here to HR diagrams way up at the top, besides having a link to the OpenStax astronomy book with uh, what, it, what it is, I included that image down at the bottom. So if you go all the way to the bottom, if you're looking for a sort of a cheat sheet for what is going on where in a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and notice there's the O, B, uh, fine gorilla karate me running along the x-axis. Shorter wavelength down here, which is hotter, even though uh, shorter wavelength would be closer to the origin, that means hotter photons, hotter stars, and the longer wavelength are red, uh, which are cooler, are down here at this end. So anyway, there's a little giveaway. So what patterns do you see? And then some questions about the absolute magnitude scale, which hopefully you can remember why it's weird. Uh, and then there, where I'm asking you, I forgot what this bullet point was, I had to read it, sorry. There are giants and super giants. I'll remind you in the video about this area. So that's the main sequence. I'm kind of giving it away. There are also other areas on the plot where giants and supergiants are located. There are red giants on here, there are white dwarfs on here, and there's supergiants. So again, you can always scroll down here and, and cheat if you don't remember where those things are. Um, and then there's a question on here about temperature versus brightness. And I'm asking you to reason about where those would be. That's the same one I just did. And I'm asking you to do the same thing for, for white dwarf stars. So you double click there and write all of those things. You could put them, uh, you could say on for your answers, you could write it all as extended writing like this, or you can hit enter and do each one one at a time. It's up to you how you want to answer it. Okay. You don't have to do it um, just on one line. So don't forget to run the code underneath line four, notice what I did. I went into the data cube, I asked for all of the constellations, and then I sorted them, making sure only to return the ones, I don't wanna see like Andromeda, for example, listed more than once, or uh, Pisces. And you don't need to know what all of the individual constellations are. There are 88 constellations in the night sky, and I actually 
did not verify that all 88 of 88 of them are represented here, but I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, so there's some common ones that probably you should notice, like there's Orion, for example, and um, I'm sure you are currently trying to find your uh, sign of the zodiac. I am an Aries, so I would be A-R-I, that sort of thing. So that's this line of code just says, hey, let's look at all the constellations because I'm going to ask you in this next block, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And it's plotting some stuff. I'm asking you in this next block, if you don't want to use Orion, which is what I did, you could put your own constellation name right there that where I just highlighted it and change it to your uh, choice for constellation. So that's what the data.query does. It says go get, so that's even another way to access. This is a third way to access our data cube, data.query as opposed to data.con or as opposed to data open bracket single quotes con. Again, con stands for constellation. So here I am making sure my uh, matplotlib object is ready to go. I'm making another figure. Here, though, I'm using something called subplot, which is where I've got one plot right next to each other. So that's what that's doing. And that's because I'm doing a scatter plot of all the stars by their uh, right ascension and declination in just my constellation. So that's what this query does up here. It Instead of having the entire data cube, I now only have the stars for this constellation. Now, it's got all of the data from the data cube like the declination, all of these, proper name, right ascension declination, all, I think there were 16 of these data elements, but only for the constellation of Orion. So that's a super fast way to go through a big data set of 119,000 stars and say, look, I don't need all 119,000 of them. I need only the ones that match ORI for their constellation name. And that's what I did. So all the stars in my data set that are from the constellation Orion, they're now in this new kind of smaller data cube. So when here on line nine, I asked to sort them or line 10, where I'm saying, here's the X axis, here's the Y axis. I'm only talking about my smaller data cube, the constellation one. Okay. And, um, Here's a yet another way to invert the x-axis. If you don't want to use x lim and put the numbers backwards, you can actually use a built-in command called invert underscore x-axis. One of the things about Python, especially with matplotlib, there are always multiple, multiple ways to get a particular thing to happen. So I'm just trying to kind of, I'm actually using Mr. Lamy's um, code as a way to touch on the different ways in which you can, you know, access the data, plot the data, that kind of thing. Uh, so what I did here is did a scatter plot on the left of all of the um, stars in the night sky. So there's the right ascension, there's the declination, a constellation in the sky. And then the title of the one on the right, which is my HR diagram, including, by the way, all 119,000 stars are there, but then overlaid on top of that in red, so overlaid on top of it in red right there, that line, so line 25, I am plotting just the right ascension and declination, I'm sorry, the absolute magnitude and the log of the temperature for Orion. That's what line 25 is doing. And line 22 is actually just exactly as it was in our previous question. That way, we this is a common visual uh, visualization technique for data sets. You use one figure that's a common thing, like the right ascension, I'm sorry, like the uh, uh, HR diagram that astronomers are used to seeing. And I just explained it maybe earlier in my paper, and here I am using it again, but I'm adding extra context. So on the left-hand side is where those stars would actually be in the night sky. Notice I'm zoomed in to just the right ascension and declination that represents Orion. There's the belt of Orion. There's uh, these four stars kind of outline uh, Orion. And I'm pretty sure this one's Betelgeuse, and I'm pretty sure this one's Rigel. I actually don't remember. This is one of the stars that you can see in actually Orion Nebula. And see, so the brightest few actually are, are where they'd be in the sky. But the red ones over here represent, okay, well, where do those particular stars show up on a, a HR diagram? So, um, and I'm going to give you a hint. The biggest and the reddest 
Remember, by the way, in um, an HR diagram, the radius of the star actually grows like from the origin to the upper right. And um, right ascension, of course, no, I keep saying right ascension, the absolute magnitude and luminosity, they go up on the y-axis and the, the temperature goes to the left increases to the left. So as you go up here, so Betelgeuse is a large star, it's a red star, and it's a cool star. And notice that there's a whole bunch of these kind of really blue, really hot stars in Orion. Orion's in the middle of making stars. When stars are new, generally they are hotter and bluer, especially when they're, there's a whole lot of material to make them from. And then there's one over here that's, you know, kind of not that different than where the sun would be on the uh, HR diagram. So if you change this ORI, like if I made it my, oops, ARI, which is from the list up there and hit play, instead of Orion, it's now Aries. So notice the entire 119,000 stars are still there as blue dots, but whatever constellation you put up there right here, that's the only place you have to change to one of these so that all the rest of the code changes from Orion to Aries. So you don't even have to necessarily know what all these chunks of code are doing. Uh, I'm, I'm giving it to you and then I'm asking you to explain what's going on, okay? So you should be able to using this sort of like chart as a giveaway. This thing is called the main sequence. Here are the, the red giants. Here are the white dwarf stars. Any of the stars that run all the way anywhere along the very top of the HR diagram, we're going to call them supergiants. These would be blue supergiants. These would be yellow and green supergiants. And these would be red ones. So if you have stars that are anywhere across that top axis, and look for, well, this is Aries. If we go back to Orion, oh, I only had to change one letter. Oops. I think we do have a, a couple of those stars maybe in that category. So I'm asking you to, for this particular constellation, well, for Orion first, what kind of stars are they? Are they, it looks like we've got some pretty big, well, some, uh, looks like some stars that are pretty blue and pretty hot. Um, and at least one red giant out of the Orion set, which makes sense because we know Betelgeuse is in there. So I'm asking you to go up and change this query to your particular choice for other constellation, you can pick any of the ones here. So that's what this line, this data open bracket quote con, it's actually going and saying, show me all the constellations, but sort them first. So alphabetically, and only show me ones that are unique. So I don't wanna see and, 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 I only wanna see one copy of each. So when you can pick any of these, this one's Ursa Major, this one is Sextans. I know it says sex, but hey, you can get over it. There's Reticulum. Uh, yeah, so all of them are listed there. Pick the one you want and autumn and run the code again, and you'll get a plot of where they are in the sky and a plot of what they look like against uh, the HR diagram. Okay, and then at the end, I'm asking you to make sure and save a copy of this because I want you to turn in the uh, well, if you hit share, you'll have a link to your particular uh, Google Colab notebook. That's what you'll turn in to me. Okay, I bet you still have questions, but you can go back and rewatch this. Hopefully that's enough to get you going on the HR Diagram Coding Lab. Good luck.